Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at the weekend of May the 4th and 5th, 2024. So this weekend, we have an astrological cross quarter day. So a cross quarter day, if I understand it rightly, is the halfway point between the equinox and the solstice. So we have the spring equinox, end of March. Of course, I understand that's the beginning of the autumn if you're in the southern hemisphere. So we've got the spring equinox at the end of March, and then we've got the summer solstice uh, towards the end of June. And then we have the halfway point between the two. Now, there is this Celtic festival of Beltane, which I think was on May the 1st, and that is regarded as being a cross-quarter day, as being approximately halfway between the two points. So May the 1st has come and gone, but the exact point where the sun is, you know, exactly halfway between the sun, but between the equinox and the solstice is this weekend and I just want to quickly look at that in this video. I also want to do a preview of the new moon which is um, on Wednesday. So we've got new moon on Wednesday. Uh, it's a new moon in Taurus and I want to consider that new moon. I also want to look at some other stuff. Uh, I was asked about these four horses that escaped in London a bit of time ago. I think that was sort of about a week ago, was it? Something like that. I can't remember precisely. And some people see this as being a bad omen. I mean, four horsemen. When you think about four horses, you get worried, don't you? The, the Was it the, the, four, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? And so is this an omen? Does, is this a sign that things are looking bad for Britain? So I do briefly want to consider that. I also want to look at... Yes, and, people who I think might be impacted by this um, by this new moon next week. Brigitte Macron, perhaps. Uh, the head of the British Chief Defence Staff, maybe. Um, Tony Radekin, I want to look at his chart. Um, I think there are problems with his chart. Um, I do look at his chart every now and then. And uh, right now, I don't think he's going through a great time, which which is bad, isn't it? I suppose he's got some responsibility or some involvement with Britain's um, war against Russia via its via Ukraine. So I want to look at his chart. I also want to look at the chart of the Kirsch Bridge. The Kirsch Bridge is the bridge bet linking Crimea with the with the mainland and you know, I've, I, it seems that Ukraine would really want to destroy this bridge <laughs> and I want to look at this bridge in the context of what what is going on at the moment and see what the chart of its i think putin inaugurated it i think it was i think it was it 2018 i think it was but i'll be looking at i'll be looking at that chart but before i do that i want to look at the astrology and the i ching for this weekend so here is a chart for the weekend set for the halfway point, um, i.e. midnight on Sunday, set it for New York as a matter of convenience. I am not necessarily saying anything particularly incredible is going to be happening this weekend. Um, so what we have here is the weekend starts with the moon um, okay, with the moon in Pisces. Uh, so you, this is a midnight position. By midnight on Sunday, the moon has actually gone into Aries. Um, but uh, through most of through most of Saturday, uh, the moon is going through Pisces. So let me just fix that chart. There's no need to have. There's no need to have Placidus has 
there's no need to have plasters house cusps on that chart because uh, you know, it's, it gives the wrong impression that we're trying to focus on some exact timed event when I really just want to get a general view. So midnight positions set for New York, there's a the moon in Aries and the moon goes into Aries London time at 21.41 um, on Saturday evening. That's 9.41 p.m. So if you're in, if you're in um, New York, that would be, what would that be? That would be... Uh, I've lost it there. What's what's that? okay? That would be four forty-one in the afternoon on on Saturday. So that's fourteen minus five. That would be um, twenty-one minus five, sixteen. So that would be yeah, four forty-one in the afternoon on Saturday, which would be early afternoon um, in on the west coast. So. If you're in, if you're in the Americas, the moon goes into Aries Saturday Saturday afternoon, and so that's when you experience a big a big change. If you're in London, uh, the moon goes into Aries on Saturday in the evening. And so, if you're in London, you can really take the view that uh, Saturday is a Pisces day, Sunday is an Aries day, and if you're in uh, Australia or in your New Zealand, the moon doesn't really go into Aries until the evening on on Sunday. So, as is so very often the case, it does somewhat depend on your time zone. Now, this move from Aries to Pisces, sorry, Pisces to Aries, it, it's quite an important one. You know, Pisces is a water sign uh, it has an emphasis on the emotional side of things um, perhaps likes to respond rather than act then when the moon goes into aries the action starts we feel the spark we want things to happen and when the moon moves into aries it starts making a conjunction to mars and moon conjunct mars can be a very dynamic aspect, but it can also be a rather angry aspect. We can get annoyed about things and we may well want to express our feelings in no uncertain terms. So if we find that people get angry, uh, don't be surprised. It may not take much to get them angry. And we ourselves might start getting annoyed about things. Um, we're just not happy with the situation, and it, people, people including us, may indeed be quick to fly off the handle. Now, just before the moon moves into Aries, so again, it does depend on your time zone, but for most of us, it'll be sometime on Saturday in the Americas. It would be maybe in the morning on Saturday. The moon is making a sextile to Jupiter. Uh, if you're in Eurasia, I think you're going to pick up on that moon sextile Jupiter. You know, Australia, Asia, Europe, you'll pick up on that um, on that moon sextile Jupiter even more, more so. And you will... Um, feel quite comfortable and I think that moon sextile Jupiter could be quite fortunate I mean, it's not going to be exciting but you're going to be in a position where you can really make things happen you're just through your through just being there you're you're through a gentle encouragement so that is something perhaps to look forward to but I must emphasize that moon sextile Jupiter is not a particularly spectacular aspect um, in the grand scheme of things. Something else happening over the weekend is a decile between Mercury and Jupiter. So there's Mercury 
uh, there's Jupiter. Yeah, they are in decile aspect. They are 36 degrees apart. 36 degrees is one tenth of the circle. And with Mercury decile Jupiter, we are trying to get heard. We want to be heard. We feel we've got something to say. And we might take the view that in the first instance, people aren't really going to listen. And that we have to do something to make them listen. And deciles can be about the struggle to adopt a particular style. And so we want to give the impression that we've got lots to say. And maybe also we want to give the impression, Mercury, Jupiter, that we've We've got something optimistic to say. And so some of us may be making a special effort to be optimistic. Perhaps we've got this idea that things really could be good, that things could be better, and we feel we really do need to get that message across. It's not an entirely natural message. It might seem a bit forced, but I don't think it'll do any harm. Um, at least we're making the effort to make the world a better place, um, even if it's only through an affirmation, perhaps through an act of positive thinking. As far as the heliocentric position of the planets is concerned, um, I said it's always a good idea to look at what's going on heliocentrically, even if a great deal even if not a great deal is happening and so this is the position of of the planets this weekend um, from a heliocentric perspective um, you'll see that mercury has is at zero degrees capricorn from a heliocentric point of view and it's really it's square neptune so Okay, that, that square between Nep Mercury and Neptune square was perhaps more of a feature of Saturday rather than Sunday. But I think we do get a, a strong feel of Mercury helios making a heliocentric square to Neptune. And I think that can be about being um, a little bit deceptive in some cases. Depends who we are. Um, people say a lot of things. But are they always are they are they always true? Maybe not, and it's quite possible this weekend to get the wrong idea about things. And this may actually connect with the geocentric Mercury decile Jupiter. I said with the Mercury decile Jupiter that it might be about the attempt to be positive and optimistic. And when we look at the heliocentric position with Mercury making a square to Neptune. It may be that in some cases, people's attempts to be optimistic is, is actually inappropriate. Um, people may be optimistic in a way that is somewhat deluded. Uh, just, just being optimistic on the basis of nothing. False facts. So if you hear something that sounds good, Maybe it's too good to be true. Um, I hate to say that, but I do bear that in mind over the weekend. So if someone is really excited about some new venture or, you know, they're saying everything's going to be fine, don't worry about it. Mm, well, perhaps you'll you take the view. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they? It makes things easier. But what is the reality? And I think we need to deal with the reality. At the same time, as this is going on, Mercury, you can see Mercury's beginning of Capricorn from a heliocentric perspective, is semi-sextile Pluto. I do think we need to look at semi-sextiles in, um, in the heliocentric chart. And this semi-sextile may be about propaganda, people trying to influence us um, in a way that um, may not always be fortunate. So we need to think carefully about what people are saying 
and perhaps ask what is their motive why are they saying what they're saying who gains in the end because there is a bit of scope for manipulation there and I don't know I don't really like to use sex styles and trines to midpoints but the midpoint between Mercury and Pluto is around 15 Capricorn and you'll see that Earth, the Earth is sextile, the Mercury-Pluto midpoint. I think that the Earth, Mercury and, Mercury and Pluto are really linked together in this heliocentric chart. And that emphasizes the point that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of propaganda this weekend. Uh, big and manipulative words. And I think it's just important that we don't fall for it. Of course, it may be we're being the prop we're being the propagandist. So if you're trying to manipulate other people and oh I don't know, if you happen to be a government leader and you're watching this, of course you won't be watching this, but if you happen to be in a position of control or you're trying to be in control and you're trying to influence people to think something or do something with Earth sextile the Mercury Pluto midpoint ah maybe you'll be able to pull it off but you do have to think about the ethical dimensions I mean you don't want to just manipulate people unless you've got a really good reason for it I mean or are you just thinking about yourself so do do consider the issue of manipulation and propaganda this weekend and having looked at the broad picture this weekend I want to consider the astrology and the I Ching so I'm, I'm going to switch back to the geocentric co coordinates and I'm going to give you my forecasts for the 12 signs for the weekend of May the 4th and 5th 2024. Aries, at some stage this weekend you're going to feel a real blast of energy as the moon bursts into your sign. Now when that happens depends on where you are. If you're in the Americas then that's going to be sometime on Saturday afternoon. If you're in uh, Australia or, or New Zealand, it may not be until Sunday evening. So it depends. But you're either getting ready to take some kind of action or you are ready for some kind of action. And you're feeling, yeah, you're feeling in a mood to really make things happen. And you just have to get your timing right. You have to consider your situation and consider when is, when is the right time to assert yourself. And in a, in, you know, in a big way, perhaps you need to, you know, be a little dramatic about it. And I suppose in a general sense you should perhaps regard Saturday as a, a day when you're really looking looking for the looking for the opportunity you're trying to work out when to do it Sunday is more when the, the real action starts to take place but you've got to trust your feelings on this it, it, you know you, you you've got to you've got to get get your timing right though having said that I mentioned yesterday, that on, on Friday, that there was a sextile aspect between Mars and Pluto. And that aspect between Mars and Pluto is still very much in operation. And so, you know, if you're thinking, OK, you're in Australia and I've just, I'm saying that the moon doesn't go into Aries until Sunday. Well, yes, that's true. But on the other hand, on Saturday, Mars is very much in sextile aspect to Pluto. So I think wherever you are, Aries, you can start to really make things happen. And with that Mars sextile Pluto, 
your power may not be immediately obvious, but you are able to make the most of all of your resources and what is available to you. So if you think you're not in a good position, if you think that you're not going to make an impact, then you don't have to be happy with and content with the way things are. You can just make a few changes because that's Mars sextile Pluto. And I suppose with Mars sextile Pluto, it starts with a basic desire. And then you have this desire and that from the desire comes analysis. You look at the world. How can you achieve this desire? What needs to be changed in the world? You change it and then you start to make things happen. So Aries, I'm not convinced that this weekend is a time for sitting on the fence. Um, You have got things that do need to be done. And I think the way you go about it is going to be quite important. Your actions should not be dependent upon anyone else. It shouldn't be a situation where you are waiting for someone else to give you the go-ahead. I mean, you might feel like that. And if you were to feel like that, feeling that everything was contingent on what other people were saying or doing, well, then actually you might get a bit frustrated and you might show your annoyance and say things that upset people and, you know, just get angry and argumentative. No, Aries, you have to understand that this is not about other people. This, I mean, other people can certainly join in, but the, that initial impulse is about you, especially as the North Node, the direction you should be going in, is conjunct the moon. And over the weekend, the moon will be getting closer and closer to the North Node. And so this is what you should be doing. This is where you should be going. And so it's not a time for being dependent. That That is really important. Now, that doesn't mean to say that everyone else is useless, that they can be ignored and, and so forth. In fact, I, th- I think there are many people who can be very useful, who will actually appreciate what you're trying to achieve okay some people won't appreciate it other people will you have to you know you have to um focus on on the right audience and you may actually get some encouragement from an unexpected quarter it will just perhaps come out of the blue or someone you'll get the impression that people actually think you're doing the right thing and i think that is going to be useful and encouraging people i mean in other words people who who are encouraging you people who have an encouraging approach to life are the kind of people that you should be hanging out with taurus the moon is starting to move into aries and as the moon moves into aries you may feel that it might be time to wind down a little, that perhaps you're not entirely in the mood for socialising, that maybe maybe you just need some space. Now, this movement into Aries does depend where you are. If If you're in the Americas, the moon moves into Aries on Saturday afternoon, if you're in Australia, it will move in New Zealand, it will move into Aries on Sunday evening. So it, it does, to an extent, de- depend. Um, but there is, a, there is a sense over the weekend that you are starting to slow down a bit. I think that's, that's, that's very much the case. And consider... The, consider the people around you. Um, consider how useful they are. Consider how fun they are. Okay, on Saturday, people might be fun. They might be amusing. But 
perhaps only up to a point and by sunday i think you're going to perhaps feel that it's you know it is time to withdraw though i don't want to overstate this especially on saturday because on on saturday um you know venus is is your ruler venus is actually it's on the mercury jupiter midpoint yeah venus is conjunct the mercury jupiter midpoint and so you know venus is the ruler of taurus so if you've got venus conjunct um mercury jupiter this midpoint it's it's a very fun talkative um, optimistic uh position for venus to be in i mean mercury jupiter is about having positive thoughts it's also about being optimistic and it's about saying things with um a sense of joy and being forward thinking and people are going to like what you have to hear and so taurus you know particularly on saturday make use of venus on the mercury jupiter midpoint um you you can you can make people happy and you can provide encouragement and so if on saturday you find for example that i don't know someone's down in the dumps or has a negative view of the world you're going to be just a person to cheer them up what if you are the one who's down in the dumps well I don't actually think there's any reason for you to be down in the dumps feeling negative this weekend. Um yeah, you know, particularly with this Venus on the Mercury Jupiter midpoint. Really try to focus on the positive, on the positives, things that are working out and sort of de-emphasize things that are um working out well, not so well. And so by by focusing on what is good, and life affirming then i i think that you can really make things work for yourself but don't overcommit yourself uh, i think that might be a temptation this weekend and particularly don't make commitments for sunday because if you have made commitments for sunday particularly commitments of a social nature when it actually comes to having to honor these commitments to be turning up to things uh it might just be a bit annoying and irksome and yeah you understand your obligations but you'd really like to cancel so perhaps you should make sunday as as free as possible and as far as people are concerned i mean people are always an issue aren't they and the moon does make a conjunction to mars um okay it depends where you are um could be late on saturday could be on sunday but depends on your time zone but with the moon starting to make a conjunction to mars and to be honest it it doesn't really matter where you are because this weekend if you think about the sky moon approaching mars don't worry about signs the angular distant the angular separation between moon and mars is not very much and with this moon mars conjunction you may find that some people are just angry about stuff they're just annoyed and difficult and they may say, they may say things which are just not, are not very helpful which kind of contrast to your approach i mean you are trying to look at things from the best possible perspective you're you're trying to be positive you're trying to um create a happy world but there are people out there who are just not really able to get into that kind of mindset they want to create problems they want to complain they want to argue and these kind of people you don't really need them in most cases at least i don't think you need them this weekend though it may be the case 
that through your positive, constructive approach that you can calm someone down. So it depends whether you want to put in the energy. But if someone is complaining, thinks that things are really grim and all of that kind of thing, and you're prepared to confront that and and say, no, you're wrong, it's like this, things that are much, much better than you, th- than you realise, then maybe you'll be able to get away with it and maybe you can um, transform the situation and turn it into something very positive. Gemini. Well, probably the main aspect this weekend is a decile between Mercury and Jupiter. I know that sounds a bit obscure, but Mercury is your ruler. It's 36 degrees from Jupiter. And um, 36 degrees is one-tenth of the circle. So this is about your attempt to create a, a positive and optimistic style. It is a struggle. And it's, in a way, is slightly uncharacteristic because Geminis can have a rather negative and over-analytical view of the world. They can try and want to deconstruct something. What is happiness? Let's define happiness. Happiness can be regarded as something chemical and if you actually really get down to it, what is happiness yeah it's just a, it's just chemicals in a bottle in a running through your body and whether it's serotonin and something like that yeah that's a sort of gemini approach so you're not you're not always able to just relax and just say well let's just take happiness for what it is um you know I've, uh, you know it's a standard approach well, are you happy what is the definition of happiness but Let's not overanalyze it. There is uh, a Mercury, Decile, Jupiter aspect. And you are, I think, or at least many Geminis are, are, are trying to create happiness. You're trying to create happiness in yourself. Um, you're trying to create a happy style. Um, and I think you are trying to look at things from the best possible light. Um, you know, of all the possibilities, of all the ways of being, you want to be in the best frame of mind. And I think to an extent you can achieve it, but it might be hard work. Not everyone is feeling as positive as you are. Some people might be very... uh, restrained in in, in their views they don't want to give much away and they certainly don't want to contemplate a world that is too wonderful though Gemini you do have to be realistic and we have to remember that from a heliocentric perspective Mercury is square Neptune uh, that heliocentric square between Mercury and Neptune, I think particularly strong on Saturday, may encourage some Geminis to be a little bit economical of truth. I think you might take the view that truth can be negotiated and compromised and reimagined, and that can be interesting, provided you resists the temptation to tell outright lies. You know, I, Geminis sometimes have a bad reputation for in, in that department. Gemini is a sign that is often associated with lies. I'm a Gemini. I don't think that's true. But some of Gemini's critics accuse Geminis of being liars. I, I wouldn't go with that. But on Saturday, there might be a temptation to tell a few white lies. Um, maybe that's the right thing to do. But... On fundamental matters, Gemini, I think it's going to be very important to tell the truth. And 
you know, I think that one of the reasons why you might be trying very hard to be optimistic and to focus on the bright side of life is that actually you're trying to avoid something. There is something bothering you and it's 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 making you tense if you dwell on it. You kind of want to pretend that it doesn't exist, but actually deep down, Gemini, you feel this sense of tension and frustration and you know you're very good at avoiding it you remember i'm a gemini too uh and so i'm not just um you know just criticizing or making ne- saying negative things for the sake of it but perhaps we need to address this tension what is making us tense what is because if we don't address that, that tension it may start to manifest in ways we weren't expecting so Perhaps we need to, to to confront it this weekend and work out how how best to deal with it. Now, another thing to point out is that Mercury is the ruler of, obviously, a ruler of Gemini. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, Mercury's opposite sign. And we do have this Mercury decile Jupiter, which I've just been talking about. Now, this Mercury decile Jupiter could have an impact on relationships and about our approach to relationships. And I think that some Geminis may want to connect with people or perhaps want to reconnect with people. Perhaps you've fallen out with someone um, and... They may do this in a quite a stylized, pre-planned kind of way. So you're going to sit down. Okay, you want to get in touch with someone. You want to be with someone. What do you have to do? What are the steps? What kind of style are you going to take? Uh, what is the process? And it could be quite contrived. It, it won't be some emotional and natural process. It will be just you trying to create things with your mind. And I'm not saying it's it's a good or a bad approach. I think that's how you're going to adopt it. I think your, your approach to people is going to be very pre-planned. And there's going to be a lot about the conscious development of a particular style. Maybe you feel if you want to get on with someone, you have to say particular things or wear particular clothes or um, um, uh, adopt a particular body language. You know, body language is supposed to be something very spontaneous. But this weekend, you are going to be thinking about everything. How are you coming across? And can you be successful trying to attract someone Get on with someone in a, in a way that is completely unspontaneous? I think you probably can, provided you just get it right and your planning is perfect. Cancer. This weekend, the moon is changing sign. I mean, that's not unusual because... For this uh, forecast, I'm looking at two days. And so very often in a two-day period, the moon will at some at some stage change signs. And so we've got one part of a weekend, we've got the moon in Pisces. Another part of a weekend, we've got the moon in Aries. And the movement from Pisces to Aries from a Cancerian perspective, in some respects, is about the movement from theory into practice. Because from a Cancerian perspective, the moon in Pisces is fairly conceptual. It's thinking about perhaps possibilities and ideas and um, maybe even sort of philosophers and we're thinking well we can do it like this and we've got a big idea here let's not commit to these ideas yet 
let's just see how it goes. But there always comes a point when theory has to turn into practice. And I think that's maybe what you're experiencing this weekend. And you know, when the moon moves into when the moon moves into Aries, and you know, this could be early afternoon if you're in California, early afternoon on Saturday if you're in California. It could be um, late evening, or not evening, or certainly evening on Sunday if you're in New Zealand. So it does depend. But it doesn't change the fact that wherever you are, we have this sign change, moon moving into, moon moving into Aries, and the moon actually making a conjunction to Mars. And... This does make you think, you, but you want something to happen. At some stage, you are going to want something to happen. And that's going to carry through until next week, until certainly until Monday. And so that is part of a preparation. You, you need to make the transition and work out what concrete steps you need to take to achieve your ambitions whether those ambitions are great or small depends on you depends on your situation i think you know what your goals and your ambitions are you know the kind of goals and ambitions that you really want to make good progress on by monday and it can be quite annoying when it's a weekend because there are things to do you don't want to just spend the whole weekend relaxing especially sunday okay maybe saturday you can uh, relax but even then, if you're in the Americas, I think that, that by Saturday afternoon, you're going to be ready to go. Uh, so it, it, it does depend, but at some stage there are things to do. And with the moon making a conjunction to Mars, or at least moving towards a conjunction of Mars, this, you know, this is a time when you want to assert yourself and... You want results, and if you're asserting yourself with the moon conjunct Mars, if anyone gets in your way, I, you might get angry. You know, Cancerians do get angry, and when Cancerians get angry, they can express that anger very powerfully. I suppose that is particularly the case, and I case with female Cancerians. I'm not trying to make a. Uh, an overly gendered point but I do think gender is important in astrology I mean I recently did this video where I talked about you know what it means to have Mars in Aries and I do think that Mars is a male planet and um, so in a female chart I think that Mars can be projected but as far as the moon Mars conjunction is concerned um, the medieval astrologer Guido Bernatus um, he had these aphorisms and he talked about moon Mars contacts he was i think guido bernatus was a monk uh, i think he might have been employed to i think people actually warlords used his advice to right, get finding the right time to um attack cities i think um but i'm not a great expert on medieval astrology uh, but anyway guido bernatus said about moon conjunct mars something like i think he used the words the woman is always right I'll warrant. And what he's saying is, when you see Moon and Mars around, so so when you see, yeah, when there's Moon and Mars around, don't have arguments with women. You should just assume they're in the right. And so with a Moon-Mars conjunction, it, it's, it's perhaps more about angry women rather than angry men if we take the Bonatus approach so in terms of moon mars and anger and assertion it may more may, may be more about um women getting angry and assertive rather than men being angry and assertive but you know that's just a view on moon and mars i, I think that um, moon and mars isn't just about one gender or the other it is indicating some general anger coming in over the weekend and perhaps into Monday, depending depending on your time zone. But 
I don't really want to put it in a negative sense, this moon conjunct Mars in Aries. Um, yes, the moon is you. And it, if you are doing nothing and if you feel that, you know, you're you're not really applying to anything, that moon Mars conjunction could be very unfortunate, just getting frustrated, not getting anywhere. But if you have a clear set of goals, something you want to do, then the moon Mars conjunction could actually be a real bonus and you can you can cover a lot of ground very quickly and I think in most cases people will get out of your way and you'll you'll be given you'll be given a lot of freedom to do what you want and I would probably encourage you cancer to focus on your goals this weekend particularly towards the end of a weekend focus on what you'd like to be done and don't be put off by the fact that it's Sunday, the day of rest. OK, I understand if you have some religious beliefs and you believe that Sunday should be a day of rest. And obviously you've got to respect that. But it does depend on perhaps what you, what you believe in. Well, maybe if you've got a religious belief and you believe that Sunday should be the day of rest, maybe you wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, Guido Bernatus, he was a monk. Uh, he had no problems with astrology. He was Christian, uh, obviously a monk. Uh, but yes, on Sunday, um, religious matter, religious uh, restraints aside, there's the kettle. Uh, religious restraints aside, try to be assertive, and even if other people are relaxing and doing nothing in particular, you have got things to do. So really, try to um, try to get results on Sunday because then you can you can move things through into Monday and that, that can set yourself, you can be setting yourself up very nicely uh, for the beginning of the week. Leo, the sun is in quite an interesting position. Remember the sun is your, the sun is um, your ruler and the sun is at around 15 degrees Taurus. Um, that means that now is the halfway point between um, the spring equinox in March and the summer solstice, which will be in June. Now, I'm going to be talking about this in detail or in more detail later. Um, but the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is because the sun is your ruler and the sun is 45 degrees from the Aries point and because of the sun is 45 degrees from the Aries point, I think overall you're actually in a very strong position. You're in a position where you can get things done. And at the same time, Leo, I think that you can get people to really sit up and listen because you've certainly got things to say and People need to take notice of you as a person. And I would, you know, therefore suggest that you, you really don't hold back and you start to see the world in terms of possibilities rather than restrictions. I say this because at you know, the beginning of a weekend, um, you may have a few self doubts. Uh, beginning of the weekend, you know, the, the moon starts. You know, the moon starts off. You know, being in Pisces, moon conjunct Neptune. That might give you a few concerns about uh, whether you've really got what it takes. But I think as the weekend progresses, it will be quite clear that you you just don't just want things to happen, but that you also want to have access to everything. And, I, and I'm thinking about possibilities. You know, think about it. There are so many different ways of doing things and there's so much knowledge available out there. And it's a time when really, Leo, you can gain access to, to it all. And if information is being denied to you, 
then go find it, go get it. You can get that information. And at the same time, your horizons do not have to be held back. And as you move through the weekend, this sense gets stronger and stronger. Uh, you, you really start to see what is possible. And I think that when you start to see what is possible, Leo, I think you get really excited. And that precise moment when the, the sun is at 15 degrees, zero minutes Taurus, uh, is going to be, yeah, is going to be very powerful when you, Leo, will connect with the world and the focus will be on you and it's almost like that the cosmos is going to expect you to do something there's, there's at least one thing that you are absolutely supposed to be doing and no one else can do it so don't think that if you don't do it someone else will no that's not true you are the only person that can do it so leo work out what that thing is, that thing that you need to do, and just make sure you do it, and don't postpone it. Don't don't wait until next week. It has to be done, and um, once you do it, you, you'll 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 know that you did the right thing. Within reason, I mean, obviously, um, there's always scope for self delusion. Um, for you know, I suppose. Leo going out of control, thinking that um, Leo is a chosen one. I'm not suggesting that, and I'm not in advocating that you have a, have a messiah complex or anything like that. I, I'm, remember, this is a reading for the weekend. It's not for the rest of your life. What is that simple, constructive thing you need to do that is legal, that is moral, that is self-affirming that is not self-destructive but is not destructive for other people what is that thing i think when you really think about it without any preconditions i think that you will really realize what that thing actually is virgo relationships are perhaps in a state of flux things are starting to change. Um, I think in some respects they are getting a little more complicated. Um, you can't take what people say, you can't take what people, what people says at, say at, at face value, not really. Um, I think People will say what is easiest and what is most convenient. And very often the truth is not going to be the most convenient thing to say. Maybe it's going to be a half-truth. I suppose it could be an outright lie. But when I talk about people, I'm not just talking about people out there. I'm talking about you as well. Because from a heliocentric perspective, Mercury, which is your ruler, is square Neptune. And I think that square is more of a feature of Saturday rather than Sunday. But this square between Mercury and Neptune may encourage you to say things which are not entirely true. And it's not that you're trying to lie or be deceptive. What you're actually doing is you're, you're looking for simplicity. You're living in a complicated world. We're all living in a complicated world. And you might take the view that the best way of handling a complicated world is to avoid difficult truths. So tell people, tell people things that are palatable. And if that means giving people, in a certain cases, just lying to them, if it's, it seems a harmless lie, then that might be best. It might be, that might be simplest. But I think really it's a time that if you find it impossible to tell the truth or you feel the truth is going to hurt someone, um, maybe you just shouldn't say anything. Because I think it's a time that if you do tell something which isn't to tell, say things which aren't entirely true, um, they could become 
problematic later on. So I think you do need to be careful what you say. And at the same time, I think that some Virgos are feeling a little bit nervous. Um, there's something that is concerning you. I mentioned this with Gemini. I said that when I was talking to Gemini, remember Gemini has Mercury as its ruler. And I, when I was talking to Gemini, I was saying that there was this underlying tension there that they were trying to hide. I, I think in your case, compared with Gemini, I don't think you're making such a big effort to hide it. I th I think you are feeling quite nervous about something. And I don't think it's dramatic, but it's bothering you. And, and I suppose that fits in with some of the stereotypical views about Virgo. Virgo is can be quite a tense sign, particularly if things are not absolutely right. And the question is, how do you address this feeling of tension and nervousness? Well, maybe you should just ask ask yourself, what is it about? What is the underlying cause? And rather than sweep the whole thing under the carpet, it might be a good idea to address it. And this goes back to what I was saying about you perhaps feeling that it might be not the right thing to tell the truth. Maybe actually it is the right thing to tell the truth. Because if you tell the truth, it brings things to a head. It, it, crea it creates a crisis here and now. And of course, crisis is not necessarily a negative thing. I, I think it's a sort of a moment of decision. It's a moment of action. And so by forcing a point... Uh, this weekend yeah there may be short term a lot of arguments a lot of unpleasantness but suddenly er everything will come out and that could be very beneficial and you then perhaps are in a situation where you have to consider how are you going to deal with other people and your relations with them. And we have this aspect this weekend, which is a decile between Mercury and Jupiter. So Mercury is your ruler. Uh, Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces, your opposite sign. So with Mercury decile Jupiter, that is about you trying to make sense of things and trying to be constructive and also trying to be positive and Virgo if you make a special special effort to be positive especially in terms of dealing with other people uh, of relationships um, maybe making a special effort to be nice to say nice things even if it's through gritted teeth um, I don't think people will notice that gritted teeth, uh, those gritted teeth. Even if it's through gritted teeth, then I think in the end you can start to have a favourable impact. And in fact, you might be able to cheer people up. It'll be an effort, but I think you can cheer people up. And I think that once you can cheer, cheer other people up, you will actually be ch cheering yourself up. Libra. Libra, the moon is on the verge of moving into Aries, which is your opposite sign. And so, you know, when the moon moves into Aries, it does put the emphasis on relationships. And you, you start to accept that other people do have an influence on you. You can't do anything about it. Now, this sign change from moon moving from Pisces to Aries does so depend on your time zone. I mean, it it could be early afternoon if you're in California. It could be late evening. It's early afternoon on Saturday if you're in California. It could be late evening in New Zealand. So it it 
it does very much depend on your time zone. But perhaps what you have to say about this weekend, well, at some stage, the moon will move from Pisces to Libra. At some stage, you are going to have to engage with other people. And at some stage, because as the, when the moon moves into Aries, it makes a conjunction to Mars. And that conjunction to Mars may not just be constrained, constrained by signs. The point is, in the sky, I mean, if you look at, you know, some astronomy program like Stellarium and you 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 look at the you get this get the program to show you the night sky you will see that the moon and mars are getting close together so looking at it from a very natural perspective and not worrying about signs just just moon and mars getting together they're getting closer and closer this weekend and so i think in terms of relationships regardless of your time zone there is going to be a moon mars feel about the weekend and with that moon mars feel the of the weekend in, in terms of relationships that means that you have to accept that some people are very energized you know the people close to you uh the people you have to deal with, maybe they're new people, but you deal with them on a one-to-one -one level, they are energised. And I think in many cases, they are annoyed about something. Or they certainly want to express their feelings. And that means, Libra, you perhaps just need to watch. There's nothing you have to do. You can just be there. You can observe. And... If you understand that that some people are annoyed about something, that makes it easier for you. You know how to just behave correctly. I mean, Librans can be good diplomats. And I think if you behave diplomatically this weekend, I don't think you're going to be caught in the storm. In fact, you may be able to smooth ruffled feathers. After all, this weekend, Venus which is your ruler, is conjunct the Mercury-Jupiter midpoint. So Venus conjunct Mercury-Jupiter midpoint indicates that in spite of everything happening, you're able to be positive and you're able to have good thoughts. And maybe you can express this positivity in an open, almost quite naive kind of way. And maybe I think this is what people are going to want to hear, just being positive but without being confrontational. Just trying to tell people that, you know, things could be better, that things aren't so, sorry, that things aren't so bad, that they need that tell other people that they need to look at the positive, coming up with some good ideas. Uh, also with Venus conjunct the Mercury Jupiter midpoint. There may be scope for just harmless small talk going absolutely nowhere. Maybe it's a good time for Librans to engage in a bit of small talk. Just avoid controversial subjects. Just be be cheerful. You may feel a bit weird, maybe a bit contrived, but I think it's the right thing to do. And in this way, just by... Also co constantly monitoring the balance. Remember, Libra is the balance. By constantly monitoring the balance between you and the other person and you and all the various one-to-one -one relationships you're in, by monitoring when things are starting to get a bit tense, saying the right thing to calm things down. And by adopting that general approach, I think that you can... Uh, actually have quite a constructive weekend and you are someone I think if you behave correctly who can yeah make people happy may not feel like it but give it a go see what happens Scorpio I said yesterday on Friday when I was talking about Scorpio I 
suggested that some Scorpios might say the wrong thing or say things that could be quite offensive. And, and I, th I suppose this issue continues into the weekend. So this weekend, do be careful what you say because your words are powerful. Um, you know, they can have a really big impact and you want that impact to be good and not bad. And so don't say negative things unless you think it is important. Though in some cases it may actually be important. Uh, you are going to be very good this weekend at problem solving. And also you're going to be good at finding problems. So if someone has a big idea or wants to do something and you hear about it, you'll listen and you will straight away know what's going to go, what could go wrong. And that means that in the right setting, Scorpio, you're going to be very good at giving advice. But I suppose you have to ask, have you been asked to give advice? So if you have been asked to give advice or you're in an environment where you're expected to provide critical feedback, then things look really good. You're, you're going to be just a person to have around. You can, you can really help someone um, avoid making a mistake. And perhaps, Scorpio, you can take a plan, which in some respects is good, but which is flawed, and you can point out the problems with the plan and you can help fix it. So that is a positive. But unfortunately, there are some people that just don't want advice. You know, someone says what they're doing and um, they just they don't want you to they don't want any comment I suppose it's it's like all those people on Facebook you know they say what they're going to do all their plans and you can tell that their plans are just awful and I mean not that I use Facebook but I've heard about it um, but you know people people want just positive feedback they say what they're going to do they don't want to be told it's a bad thing to do uh, they just want positive feedback. They say, oh, I'm going to fly to the other side of the world. They don't want to be told, watch your carbon footprint. They just want to say, cool, good thing, thumbs up, red heart, whatever. And they don't want Scorpio to come along and just, just tell them it's, it's, it's a bad idea. So if you're going to give advice and criticism, make sure that the setting is, that the setting is correct. And that the advice will be actually appreciated. Because, in fact, if you give advice to someone who doesn't want advice, they may even be less inclined to accept your advice. So if you've got someone who you really care about, who is perhaps a bit stubborn, who is on the verge of making a big mistake, you have to think about very carefully about how you're going to stop them doing what they're planning on doing and just by telling them it's wrong that's that's a bad way of doing it but on a positive sense you know mercury from a heliocentric perspective is um is semi-square uh sorry is square and um neptune and it is just possible that you can utilize that semi-square mercury but mercury semi-square neptune it's not just Mercury is not just semi-square Neptune. We've also got um, Mercury's semi is semi sextile Pluto, and I understand that Mercury doesn't have any direct relevance to the sign Scorpio, but I think you might be able to harness that heliocentric energy, and you can harness that when you're in a situation where you want to get through to someone, you want to tell someone to do something or not to do something, but you take, but it's quite clear they're not, they're not, they're not open to your message. And 
with that those heliocentric energies, it allows you to be quite manipulative, and there is a way of getting your way without being direct. And you're a Scorpio; you know how to do it. So you have to use all your Scorpio charms and talents if it's important to get get your opinions across, to get someone to listen to you. That there, there is Scorpio. I, th I think there is um, a way of doing it, though I should point out that over the weekend the moon is moving into Aries quite when, depends on your time zone, could be early afternoon in California, could be the evening and early afternoon on Saturday in California, could be the evening in New Zealand, it depends, but with this moon moving into moving into Aries, there is a sense in which you do have to make sure that your own house is in order before you start worrying about what other people are doing. And I think that's something that as you move from the weekend into Monday, you need to address yourself to do, address yourself to, because I think um, there is at least one area of your life which is is definitely not in good shape it's not it's not a big deal or anything but it's something that's not in good shape and it needs to be sorted out over the next few days and once you've sorted it out i think you're going to be in a much better position to give other people good advice sagittarius you are in a somewhat strange state of mind i th i think you're thinking about uh, rather difficult concepts um, you're thinking maybe that something is coming to an end uh, something you really care about is coming to an end and it almost has a slightly sort of Wagnerian feel to it. Um, you, you know, there's a sense of um, a sense of tragedy here. But I don't want to exaggerate. I mean, I'm, I'm being completely melodramatic here, um, and so I don't want to over overstate the point. Um, but I think that in your imaginings, you might feel that something. It's an end of an era feel to it to d this weekend. Um, so perhaps tragedy was the wrong word, but you know, with I suppose in a, in a Wagnerian sense, you 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 think of I don't know, Twilight of the Gods and uh, love and death and all that kind of thing. And, and some Sagittarians might actually be feeling that. Um, it doesn't really have an impact on your day-to-day -day life. It's not actually about your day-to-day -day life. I'm not talking about anything that's going to happen to you. In necessarily in in the real world, it's just more about the way you feel, and I think Sagittarius, it just may be a time when you feel that there's some kind of transition, perhaps from the old ways of doing things to the new ways of doing things. Uh, it might have something to do with Pluto just having gone having gone retrograde um, it's it's making us all think about society and how society is changing and um, the idea that things just are never going to be the same and I suppose we all get that don't we um, isn't it that Austrian writer is it, what's his name Stefan Zweig he was talking about Vienna just before the just before the um, beginning of the first world war where the, things changed with the first world war and things were never going to be the same again that the old world was over and so that might be might be something that you're you're thinking about but don't completely obsess about it uh yeah in fact you must not obsess about it because reality is that things are changing and you are you are part of the future and you have to perhaps accept your role in the future. And the moon is changing sign over the weekend. It's moving out of Pisces into Aries. And I think the problem 
with the moon being in Pisces from a Sagittarian perspective is that it can make you just a little too focused on your immediate neck of the woods, just too focused on your own reality. And that can perhaps encourage some negative thinking. Uh, but when the moon goes into Aries, I think I think it's going to be a lot more positive. You know, whenever the moon does go into Aries, whether it's whether it's lunchtime on Saturday or um, Sunday evening, when the moon does go into Aries, things are going to feel a lot better. After all, the moon in Aries it's a far sign. It's in a far sign. You are a far sign, and I think that any feelings of uh, sort of sort of tragedy and regret will start to dissipate and I think that you'll find it easier to contemplate the future and I would urge you to try very hard to contemplate the future after all mercury is making a decile to jupiter so jupiter's your ruler mercury in one sense is just a planet of thought and Jupiter can be very optimistic. And so perhaps what you have to do is make a special effort to have good good thoughts about the future. And it may not be easy to begin with, but I th- think if you put in the effort and you try to imagine what that future can be and imagine what your role in that future might be, then you're going to start to feel a lot more positive about yourself and that is going to have an influence also on on relationships so if you make a special effort to be positive if you make a special effort to perhaps address other people's concerns and not your own concerns even if even if your immediate inclination is to be selfish and to be self-centered i think that could be the case um we're all like that by the way we're all selfish um we all tend to focus on our own issues and so i'm not singling you out in any way but if you make a special effort to focus on other people's concerns rather than your own concerns um you'll quickly have a favorable impact people will pick up on it quickly and uh it might be a bit of an effort but just keep going and you will be able to get through to people and you'll start to understand other people's realities, other people's issues. And yeah, I think you're going to make other people's lives better this weekend if you can really harness that decile between Mercury and Jupiter. Capricorn. Capricorn, you seem to be in a mood where you feel that you don't really want to be there, you don't really want to be involved, perhaps you just don't feel that there's anything going on that you want to be part of. I think that is your inclination. And I think that that inclination is possibly going to get stronger as the weekend progresses. I think, I mean, I think that that's the way it is. I'm not saying it's necessarily harmful, uh, but it's not very constructive. And the danger, I think, Capricorn, might be that at some stage you become a little bit obsessed. You decide that one thing is really important uh, it's you. It's something to do with you and your world. You decide it matters and you start to put down the shutters. And there's then the question of, are you actually doing anything useful? Well, it may be that you are doing something useful. So provided you're doing something concrete and Maybe you're at home um, doing something concrete, doing something constructive, then that's fine. And you know, ideally, you'll be 
putting all your energy into one task and sure you might not care about other people but you know but so what on the other hand if you are not comfortable in what you're doing if you're not doing anything constructive particularly if you're um, agitated then it's a different picture then that is not a good place to be and so Capricorn I think this weekend it is really important that you have a task that you have a very clear goal something that is absolutely achievable and something that perhaps you can achieve maybe by maybe by Monday uh, that kind that kind of time frame I should also say something about your domestic environment because there are a lot of planets in Aries you remember Mars has gone into Aries and Mercury is in Aries the North Node is in Aries a lot of effort has, has gone into is going into your domestic environment and, and into issues relating to property real estate land these are all things that are the things that are very material which are of concern to you and so when the moon moves into aries it really makes it personal this is where your this is where your efforts are and i suppose other people have to understand that so if anyone wants to engage with you um they're going to have to do it on your terms that almost quite literally going to have to come onto your territory um of course if they're invited onto your territory and that's how they can that's how they have to deal with you because you are not going to compromise for anyone this weekend and as the weekend progresses it's going to be even stronger you are yeah so no one can expect you to compromise and you have to ask yourself whether that is the right right kind of um scenario that you're trying to create for yourself is that what you want or are there people that you do want in your life but they're just going to stay out of your way because because as I said the shutters are down so in in that case you may have to provide some method to communicate to get in touch with you if you know the way people can get in touch with you how are people going to get in touch with you if the shutters are down and if everything has to happen on your terms so there is in one sense quite a lot to negotiate here but it just may be that other people don't really matter this weekend you, you know you take the view well there are things to do um only you can do them okay. okay maybe there are members of your family who can be of assistance people you know really well but anyone else they're not going to understand so why bother them why why bother with them and why let them waste your time so that could be your approach and provided you are concentrating on something tangible where there is a clear destination i think I think that's okay. Just don't get emotional today this weekend and don't brood and don't put your energy into something which ha- which is non-tangible which um which can't be resolved. Yeah, that would that would not be a good thing. So uh I'd like to be more positive Capricorn, but I think I think that's the main message for this weekend. Aquarius Aquarius you are kind of gearing up a little because Aquarius you do have an increasingly clear sense of who you are and what you want to say and because you've got this clear sense you are in a position where you're going to be able to I think really tell people what you think and i think they'll understand what you think so don't hold back and 
at the same time don't be too impatient it may take a it may take a bit of time to get into the swing of things so saturday might be a time of preparation when you're not absolutely sure how you want to go about things but then by sunday you're going to be firing on all firing on all cylinders and you are going to be a real force to be reckoned with and you can get things done and i think that your verbal skills will be excellent though when you want to be angry this weekend i think you really do know how to be angry um, that's that's going to be really clear i mean is it necessary to be angry well we just mustn't forget that the moon and mars are very close to one another and this moon mars conjunction takes place in takes place in aries and this is this is not a time when aquarius is going to want to hold back and furthermore mars is making a sextile to pluto and remember pluto is in aquarius it may be going retrograde but it's stationary retrograde it's okay it's going retrograde but it's still very slowly going going very slowly going retrograde now um, and so with mars sextile pluto that gives you extra power it's about you having a clear sense of who you are and what you want and being able to really express it with with everything you've got but don't forget other people the sun is the ruler of leo leo is your opposite sign and this weekend the sun is at 15 degrees taurus you might say well so what well 15 degrees taurus is the halfway point between the um equinox and the solstice Uh, and it means you know the sun is 45 degrees from the aries point so that puts people in a strong position there are people out there who are really connected with the world and you would be advised to take them seriously uh, because they understand what's happening and if you get close to them you can start to pick up on this understanding don't 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 be surprised if you hear something that you won't you don't want to hear you may you may hear something about the world that someone tells you um that really surprises you and people are full of surprises right now i mean the sun is not just on the 45 degrees from the aries point it's also conjunct the venus uranus midpoint and so this means aquarius that people can suddenly appear from nowhere almost and and by the same token they can disappear from nowhere so people are going to be turning up all over the place disappearing all over the place and you shouldn't worry about this i think in fact in some respects it might make things might might make things exciting but if someone suddenly appears don't assume they're going to be around forever and you may have actually have an adva- have a, have an opportunity to take advantage of someone's presence and you have to do it right now if you just say oh yeah that's someone's just turned up that's interesting i i wanted to talk to them i wanted to say something uh just give me a moment then they've gone so if you want to take advantage of someone's company um then you better be quick because uh things are changing very quickly on a social level and so the situation can change from 5 minutes to, isn't it like the weather in iceland someone said that i'd have never been to iceland i no, actually i did spend an hour in uh, the um in Reykjavik airport that was pretty grim uh, but i've heard that in iceland the weather changes quickly 
and so it's like with the social the social environment um it's going to change quickly this weekend and so if you want to get through to someone you have to be quick you have to take advantage of the moment pisces the moon is moving out of your sign uh, quite when it moves out of your sign it kind of depends on your time zone um, it could be saturday afternoon it could be sunday evening saturday afternoon if you're in california uh, could be um, the evening of sunday evening if you're in new zealand so it does depend and with the moon moving out of your your sign you're perhaps going to be a little uh, less flexible than usual. You know, you, you were being quite relaxed, easygoing. And then when the moon moves out of, um, out of Pisces into Aries, it just makes, it makes a conjunction to Mars. It starts making conjunction to Mars. I mean, that conjunction between Mars, between Mars is building up all weekend. It, it in a sense, it, it doesn't really matter about your time zone. You, if you, you look at the sky, Moon and Mars are getting closer and closer, and that conjunction between Moon and Mars may suggest one area of frustration or annoyance, and perhaps that area of frustration and annoyance is connected with money that is possible um, you may feel that something is not fair or that money is owed to you or someone has taken your money or has not been entirely honest so those feelings are starting to brew for some Pisceans and the the way of dealing with it in the end is to be direct and not to sit on it. So if someone or some company or some organization owes you money or is charging you too much money, then you have to work out how you're going to deal with the issue. And I understand it's a weekend, things are closed, people might be unavailable, but perhaps you need to actually consider your strategy and that would help you, for example, on Monday, being able to make a complaint, make confronting someone and say, you owe me money or you haven't been entirely truthful. But it, it's up to you, Pisces. You have to trust your intuition on, in terms of how best to handle the situation. Another thing going on this weekend is that Mercury is decile Jupiter. Jupiter is your ruler and... Mercury is ruler of Virgo, which is your opposite sign. So we have this decile. And this decile between Mercury and Jupiter could have an impact on relationships and how you're able to get closer to another person. And the decile is, yeah, it's a tenth of the circle, 36 degrees. It's not an entirely natural contact. You know, it's not a nice, easy comprehensible aspect like a conjunction or a trine it's a kind of quite obscure 36 degrees a tenth of the circle and it's basically trying to work out how best to get on with someone it's not natural or spontaneous that's the point it's actually quite planned and you're making a special effort to create a particular style in order to attract someone or to get someone's attention and it might feel doubly unnatural because you're a Pisces you're a Pisces as a Pisces you you know you like to do things spontaneously you like to be flexible as I said in the beginning of this piece on your sign so yeah it's doubly unnatural but sometimes that's the best way of of dealing with it, of, of trying to get someone's attention. It does need some planning. Perhaps you need to think about what kind of person someone is, um, what kind of things they want to talk about, uh, what kind of things they find appealing and attracting, uh, appealing and attractive. And then 
you can fine tune your approach in a way that, yeah, might feel a bit contrived. But I think with this Mercury decile Jupiter, that is the way to go about it. So, so if you want to improve relationships or to gain a new relationship, then thinking and planning and a real focus on style and presentation could be very important. That's it for the 12 signs and I am going to look at the weekend from the perspective of the I Ching. So I asked the question, what is the weekend going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram 44 which is coming to meet and this hexagram is a warning about being too keen to give in to someone else's advances 44 is about coming to meet is about someone who seems easy to get on with who seems easy to form a relationship with and they just seem a bit too keen and okay on the face of it it seems to have romantic connotations and certainly that's what the I Ching talks about a woman who is who's who's overly keen to marry that's the symbol in the I Ching but I think we can use this this um, I Ching to talk about any situation where someone is trying to be in contact with us or perhaps trying to sell us something or um, is trying to worm their way into our confidence and there are two moving lines and the warning here is that we need to really think about the consequences of what it would mean to allow someone into our confidence to sort of metaphorically bring someone into our house to form a relationship with them and those consequences are likely to be negative and so I think the advice here is perhaps to be a bit standoffish and to refuse offers uh, and just remember but what we absolutely don't want to be is be in a state of dependence because it's a situation where if we're not careful we could move from being independent to being dependent and all because we give in to someone's offer we should take the view that as far as possible we can handle things on our own got to be self-sufficient and really try to avoid asking for help even if we're starving, <laughs> almost, um, just if we've got enough food to sustain ourselves, then that's enough. We do not need to get other people's help because if we ask for people's help, um, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch and um, there'll be a comeback on that. And the, see, it just seems to be that the universe is conspiring to make us dependent this weekend and that dependency is absolutely not a good thing it's going to weaken us and put us ultimately maybe in a sense of be in a sense of complete powerlessness and this hexagram 44 it's got two moving lines a second from the bottom and a third from the bottom and it transitions to hexagram 12 which is standstill so the message is the same and what the Wilhelm translation of I Ching sa says it says words to the effect that the strong is leaving and the weak is arriving the weak elements are getting stronger the strong elements are getting weaker and this is not the way it should be um heaven is shutting up shop it's closing the doors um it's it's a it's a bit like you know when you see those uh, films of s submarines and ships sinking 
you know how they they shut these steel doors and even though there are people on the other side drowning they they have to seal everyone in to keep the boat afloat and so with standstill it's a bit like that you have to shut the doors because if you regardless of the, all the screaming and chaos on the other side of the door you have to save yourself and that's perhaps the sort of the evil elements that are, are trying to take us down and create chaos for us and and so that fits with the previous hexagram 44 and the, the need for being independent and at the same time we're not going to make much progress this weekend but okay sure we could say well we could get some help but this is not a time for getting help we have to be stubborn and we have to be self-reliant even if our self-reliance is somewhat grim and we're, we're you know we're not getting the assistance or the support we feel we'd like but we just have to resist that temptation um, of course it depends on the situation clearly um, there are sometimes there are times when you do need support if if it's a matter of life and death or i don't know your your car's broken down and you can't fix it sometimes you need support but um in a day-to-day -day sense um we should try to be as self-reliant as possible this weekend now i want to turn to the i ching and I talked about this thing called, or I called it, the the astrological cross-quarter day. Maybe it's an astronomical cross-quarter day. And this is the halfway point between um, uh, the equinox and the, so the spring equinox and the um, summer solstice. And... This is it. Uh, I've said it for New York. So it takes place, uh, according to my calculations, on May the 4th, which was... So it takes place on Saturday evening, New York time. So uh, I make that 8.10 p.m. Uh, in New York. So that would be 5.10 p.m. in Los Angeles. And if that would be ten past one in the morning in London. So if you want to celebrate this astrological cross-quarter day, uh, those are some of the times. If you really want to know other times, for other locations, well, you know, just you can ask on on the, on the, in the comments. Uh, but I don't think it's not quite the big deal of the of the solstice or the equinox but I do think it is a moment of power when to an extent there is a gateway and you can see this is set for New York and you can see that there is uh, a sun Uranus conjunction um, on the descendant um, so that may say something about New York and I think it might be a good idea to do uh, an astrocartography of it um, to, to, to do a map to, so, to see sort of where on earth might uh, this um, astrological cross, cross quarter day have an impact so I'm, I haven't actually done the astrocartography before so I'm I mean I'm not saying that it's going to be that we're going to see anything dramatic here but there you can see um, Uranus is on the opposite it's, it's west of the west atlantic uh but it, it doesn't seem to impact anything directly uh in, in in america but i suppose the sun is going to be setting at the on, on the east coast and i suppose the setting will be broadly setting for example in washington dc and i suppose that puts emphasis on America's enemies certainly over the next 45 days so in terms of timing of how long it lasts for I would have said that this chart lasts for six weeks between now and the summer solstice at the at the end of June and so let's let's uh, let's just 
set that set this chart for I suppose we should set the chart for Washington DC to give us uh, a more precise because that is the capital of uh, Washington DC um, so Washington DC it's the ascendant is 1703 um, Scorpio. The sun is at 1503 Scorpio. We've got Jupiter in the seventh house, Uranus in the seventh house. So yes, I think there is a sense in which this might have an impact on America's foreign policy and things going on over the next six weeks. Um, whether it's in, I don't know, whether it's in Ukraine, whether it's in the Middle East, um, it sort of might shake things up a bit. But I mean, I don't want to be over dramatic about it, though I think in terms of the quality of this chart, this chart, forget about the precise location, whether it's in London or New York or Moscow, it doesn't matter. The point is, at the time that the sun was exactly at 15 degrees Taurus at the time of a precise astrological cross quarter day there is a moon conjunct there's the moon is conjunct Mars and I think that's what matters moon is conjunct Mars therefore um, we can expect the next six weeks to be pretty angry and I suppose that's more of a global thing. I, I think this chart is, is not necessarily about individuals, but we are living in an angry world and perhaps we should actually consider where that Moon-Mars conjunction actually is. In, in, and we'll go, I'll go back to the astro-cartography to, to look at where that Moon-Mars moon Mars is. And so another thing to point out that Neptune is at 29 degrees 3 minutes so it's only Neptune is now uh, uh, less than a degree from the Aries point and so that sun is going to is now is, is semi-square is, is semi-square Neptune it's semi-square Aries so you know whenever you get these solstice points uh, when, when you get equinoxes I mean, the next spring equinox, uh, sorry, the next solstice in June and the winter, the, the spring equinox. They, these equinoxes are now going to be very close to Neptune. So at the time of this cross quarter, this astronomical, astrological cross quarter day, Neptune is involved and it just emphasizes the point that Neptune's very close to the Aries point. It's it's a time when the world is becoming more confused, um, perhaps a greater chance of sea disasters, storms, but it's it is difficult. Neptune is strong right now. It's getting close to Aries. Closer and closer. And going back to the astrocartography, uh uh I just wanted to see if there's anything uh, anything connected with some. You see, there's, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, you can. So, but, so there is a Moon-Mars conjunction um, on, the, on the IC, but that would go, that's very specific. That just goes through um, eastern, Bra eastern Brazil. So I wouldn't have thought there's... I don't know what happens in East. I think things can happen in Eastern Brazil. Brazil is a big place, so that might be a part of a world to look at. Also, Moon Mars is con conjunction is um, goes through Japan and goes through New Guinea. So going through Japan, being c relatively close to Tokyo. So I'm thinking maybe we should consider what this chart looks like if we relocate to Tokyo. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, uh, so there's the midheaven. So Tokyo has a midheaven of six degrees, six Aries. Mars is at three degrees Aries. So 
maybe if you're in Japan, you need to be a bit careful with this astronaut, astro, astro, astronomical quarter day. But it's kind of quite theoretical. I, I haven't seen other people using these this 45 degree aspect, this astronomical cross quarter day. I just wanted to talk about it just to say that there is this event happening today, uh, happening on Saturday, and just be aware of it. Another thing I wanted to consider is the new moon, uh, which happens next week. And it's it's happening on um happening on Wednesday. So I thought I should give a sort of a quick sort of preview of this new moon. I do not find this new moon particularly interesting. It's it's not an eclipse. It's at 18 degrees 2 Taurus and um, there it is, 18 degrees 2 Taurus and it's actually it's on the Venus it's on the Venus Jupiter midpoint, so you can see that Venus is about eight degrees from the new moon, Jupiter is about eight degrees from the new moon. So this is a new moon on the Venus Jupiter midpoint, and I hate to say this, but to my mind that's that's quite optimistic. Um, I think for many of us, this new moon can bring some sort of well-needed optimism into our lives. Um, there may be things to be happy about, um, you know, all things being equal. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just unconvinced that this is a spectacular new moon. Um, I've set this new moon for London. I mean, what what can we see? There it is. There's a new moon. It's sextile Saturn. It's on the Venus-Jupiter midpoint. So it's quite possible that this new moon may be quite a stabilizing influence for us. And remember, this is on Wednesday. And this new moon might also, um, it might also, what was I going to say? It, it, it's, well, it's the ending. It's, it's the beginning of a new lunar cycle. It's the start of a waxing moon. So if things are difficult at the moment, um, you know, it's, we're still very much in the waning phase as I talk this weekend of the fourth and fifth. By Wednesday, after Wednesday, the moon is, is, is the moon is waxing, and so that is a time for optimism. It's, and we can start to really start to stabilize things with moon sextile Saturn, and because the new moon is on the Venus Jupiter midpoint, um, I, I think that that is. Um, um, that's going to allow us perhaps to look on the bright side of life. Um, there are things to be happy about. And if you've got something planned, which you want to really get off the ground, um, then wait till after the new moon. Wait till after the moon is waxing. And yeah, the new moon, I must emphasize it. That's really good. The fact that the new moon is on Jupiter, on, on the Venus-Jupiter midpoint. Uh, it's a very Taurean new moon, isn't it? Because we've got we've got five planets in Taurus: if you, uh, Venus, Sun, Moon, Uranus, Jupiter, and they do seem to be uh, quite well configured. So that's really all I want to say about this new moon, except for the fact that there are a couple of people who might be influenced by it. Uh, remember, this new moon is at eighteen two Taurus. One person who might be influenced by it is Brigitte Macron. Brigitte Macron has her Mars at 1732 Taurus. So this new moon is opposition Mars. Now she has, but remember, she is a wife of Emmanuel Macron, the French president. And her Mars is square. Um, she's got Mars square Pluto. And... Remember what I was saying with Mars, it's often projected. Mars may represent the men in her life. So maybe by looking at Brigitte Macron's chart, we're actually looking in a way at her husband's chart. So if if he is Mars, uh, if, she, if he is Mars, he, almost Emmanuel Macron has a quality of Mars-Pluto and there is a new moon opposition um, 
Brigitte Macron's Mars. So, so perhaps via Brigitte Macron's chart, we can see something about Emmanuel Macron. So perhaps with New Moon opposition Mars, this is about the anger of um, Emmanuel Macron. Clearly, he's an angry man. Um, he's very annoyed about what's going on in Ukraine. He's uh, talking, keeps talking about sending troops to Ukraine, which is, of course, could, would be disastrous because it could risk nuclear war. Plus, those troops would, as soon as they were identified, would, be, of course, be destroyed by the Russians. But that might be his tempta the temptation there. But so perhaps that's saying something about his about Macron and how this new moon is going to affect him via his wife. Continuing on the theme of the new moon, the chief of the defence staff the, uh, in the UK is Admiral Tony Radakin, and I don't have a time of birth for him, but he has Sun conjunct Neptune in Scorpio. Nice position if you're an admiral to have sun conjunct Neptune and Scorpio. Neptune, rule of the sea. No wonder he, he wanted to join the Navy um, and was so successful in the Navy. But this new moon at 18.2 Taurus is opposition his sun, opposition his Neptune. So I think that this new moon may actually put him under a certain amount of pressure. And I think part of his responsibilities is trying to... <laughs> At trying to supervise Britain's war against Russia in Ukraine. And uh, when we look at other things going on in his life, um, if, you know, his, we know that from the perspective of solar arc directions, this is his um, um, these are his uh, solar arc directions for uh, for what's it for for now? Let's just uh, put that on. A, uh, I think I've got that right. Okay, so so Tony Radakin was born with a Uranus Neptune conjunction in Virgo. So at the moment, his directed Uranus sorry Uranus Pluto conjunction. So his directed Uranus Pluto conjunction is really moving on to his Sun-Neptune conjunction, particularly on his Sun. So he's got directed Pluto on his Sun. And so there is an obsession there. And I, and I think in this case, it's, it's a sort of an obsession, with, um, an obsession with Ukraine. He's part of Britain's obsession with Ukraine. And in fact, in his natal chart, he's got a Pluto-Charon opposition. So his Pluto Charon opposition is on his son and that sort of anger and that desperation to defeat Russia and that wound of not being able to do it. And with this new moon coming up at 18.2 Taurus, it hits his son again. So, it, so perhaps he's going to be tempted to do something to, or suggest something dramatic. But you know, he, he is someone who I think we need to be... Um, very careful about him. I, I mean, I know he's, I'm sure he's very good at his job, but, you know, he's just had his, Tony Radakin, he's got, just got his, he's had his Saturn at 10 Pisces, 10 Pisces, he's just had his Saturn return. And so he's probably feeling a bit under pressure. And so, yeah, you, you don't want to have these kind of people running Britain's, um, Britain's defences and making suggestions about what Britain does to try to, to try to defeat Ukraine in this last gasp. I, um, so I think there's, uh, a bit of a problem there with Tony Radakin. I do think the um, the new moon may have an impact on him and may perhaps encouraging, encourage him to suggest things that uh, may be unwise. Which brings me on to the horoscope of Ukraine. And here is the chart of Ukraine. And Ukraine uh, has its... Ukraine's Pluto, that's what I wanted to look at, Where's Ukraine's Pluto gone? There, Ukraine's Pluto, 1746 Scorpio. This new moon is opposition Ukraine's Pluto. Um, it's uh, it's more stress for the country. I'm not saying that in itself it's a big deal having, Plu having a new moon opposition your Pluto. Lots of people have their Pluto at 17 Scorpio. But it is something that 
I wanted to point out. And this brings me on to the Kirsch Bridge. The Kirsch Bridge is something that I... Uh, God, I find I've suddenly got lots to talk about and I've sort of committed myself to talking about it, so my apologies. So the Kirsch Bridge... Um, was uh, is this bridge linking uh, Crimea with, with with mainland Russia, and it was uh, it, I think Putin opened it on May the fifteenth, two thousand eighteen. So there is there is the, there is the the chart of the bridge. I have no idea what time he opened it. Uh, but we can't help but notice this was this was opened around the time of a new moon on um, the new moon would have been at around 24 Taurus. And Uranus is approaching the conjunction of the, this new moon. I mean, it's already been there, but it's, Uranus is having a, another cross between now and I think into early June, so and it's opposition Jupiter. So the Ukra- Ukraine is absolutely desperate to destroy this bridge. Um, I mean, the bridge is not of any military, apparently, the mili- bridge is no longer of any military significance. There are many ways in which Crimea can be supplied, it can be supplied over land, there's a rail link. So the bridge is of symbolic value, it's mainly, I think, now of civilian use, but still. The Ukrainians want to want to get it, and I think with uh, Uranus making that making a conjunction to, to to the new moon, that shows there's more trouble for the bridge. Will they get it? Apparently, it's really difficult. It's a very big bridge, and sure, you can get you can get one part of it, but are you actually going to be able to get the whole bridge? Um, possibly not, but still. That's just a reminder that we could be looked at that bridge in was the place in Baltimore, and so we looked, we've already looked at one chart of a bridge, that bridge in Baltimore. So I'm looking at the chart of another bridge. This is this is the Kirsch Bridge, and yes, it does have Uranus um, hitting the hitting the um, hitting the new moon uh, at which it was opened with, and so that does suggest yes, there are going to be attacks. There already have been attacks, and I suppose that tells us what we already know. And finally, no, in fact, there are two more things I want to talk about. Um, one thing I want to talk about is I want to actually go back to the U- Ukrainian chart. And I just wanted to tell you one thing I, I noticed about Ukraine, which um, relates to what I was talking about yesterday. Remember yesterday I was talking about the Mars-Uranus conjunction in, um, uh, in June, July the 15th. At uh, twenty six, uh, twenty six Taurus, and I suggested that this l- conjunction can be linked with the end of empire and can be about defeat, particularly defeats for Britain and the U.S. Remembering the last time there was a Mars Uranus conjunction at the beginning of nineteen forty two was coincided with the fall of Singapore and. Uh, uh, I mean, that was a big issue for for Britain. But, I mean, there were, America was in full retreat in the East. That was the worst part of Brit- America's war with Japan. And so we do have this Mars-Uranus conjunction at 26, um, at 26 Taurus. And if you look at... If you look at... Uh, the chart of Ukraine. Uh, you you can you can see that Ukraine has Mercury at 26, 26 Leo. Now that Mercury is on is opposite is where is it? No, it's square the Sun Moon midpoint. So. Ukraine is a country with Mercury on the sun-moon midpoint. If you take the chart for when Ukraine declared its independence, um, Mercury was on the, on the sun-moon midpoint. 
And that says so much about Mercury, about Ukraine, doesn't it? Mercury, Ukraine, if you look at this wall, they've got tons to say. The Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine's PR machine is always in overdrive. Um, they've always got something to say. They don't care about diplomatic niceties. It's all a big PR machine. And Mercury is just feeding information to the West. The West, Western media likes to take what Ukraine says at face value. Um, very often what Ukraine says are just complete well, exaggeration or underestimation, depending on your situation. I think recently Zelensky said that 31,000 Ukrainians, Ukrainians have been killed, troops have been killed during the war. Um, I think he said that about like a month ago or something. The real figure is half a million plus. You know, that's an example of just something which is plainly untrue. And so Ukraine is a country that really Mercury on a, Mercury on the sun moon midpoint is, describes the country absolutely perfectly. But July the 15th, there is a Mars Saturn conjunction. And that Mars Saturn conjunction is at 26 degrees Taurus. It's exactly square Ukraine's Mercury. And it is on, sorry, did I say Mars Saturn? It's Mars Uranus conjunction. The Mars Uranus conjunction is on Algol, the head of the demon. It's square Ukraine's Mercury and it is on Ukraine's um, sun moon midpoint. So it, it, gets that whole that that Mars Uranus conjunction gets that whole PR machine, the whole way in which Ukraine messages about itself. And maybe that is the time when the whole thing is going to collapse. So that is a possibility and it's 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 soon. It's only two months away. But I thought I would just point that out. One final thing. Um I was asked about those four horses that escaped uh, um, and in London, I think they were uh, military horses. And I was asked to just look at the chart for the escape. And so this happened some time ago. It happened on April 24th, 2024. Uh, I think 8.40 a.m. said it in Westminster, London. Uh, you could say, well, there's Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. OK, it's not exact, but it's quite close. Jupiter-Uranus is about freedom, wanting to be free. And it's in the 12th house. So in traditional astrology, um, animals are ruled by the 6th house. Pets, whatever. Up to the size of a goat, I think. But if something is larger than a goat, it becomes 12th house. So 12th house rules large animals, larger than a goat. So whales, elephants... Horses are all 12th house and dogs, cats are 6th are house. So Jupiter Uranus in the 12th house, a horse wanting its freedom is fits it perfectly. Although I believe in this case, the horses had been alarmed by something and it wasn't just a quest for freedom. It was they were in distress. Uh, so that's the first point. Second point, it did happen just after a just after a full moon and a rather difficult full moon. So there was the moon, the sun is at four degrees Taurus, moon is at eight degrees Scorpio. So, um, yes, I mean, I think that there was perhaps an element perhaps of the horses maybe just responding to the full moon. Maybe it's just animals have an issue with the full moon uh, and a more, um, uh, are more nervous during a full moon, and maybe that was all. That was all that it. What it. That's all it was. So, you know, I'd love to say that it was some dramatic omen, but a brief look at this chart doesn't really suggest to me that, uh, in itself, it's an omen. But at the same time, things are going wrong in the UK. We know things are going wrong in the UK. Four horses escaping. It's not a good sign, but. Um, I'm not sure if I want to link that escape with astrology and suggest that that in itself is a bad omen. Though I think astrology aside, you can say you could say it's it's not really um, a very good sign, is it? Okay, that's all I'm gonna I want to say for today. Um, 
as always, I've gone on for too long. Um, nonetheless, uh, I hope you found what I said of some interest. If you did find it interesting, I would be very grateful if you were to like this video. If you're not subscribed, I'd be very, very grateful if you were to subscribe. If you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you again very soon.